this fair play 2333 and i want to give a salute to all my cinema cronies welcome back to the power book multiverse and cinema show where you get the latest in power universe and cinema breakdown if i'm on the mission is you riding like some michelin homie in the kitchen fire stones how he whipping it i be on my michigan blue and yellow vintage it's make a right on michigan 69 too hot for us stick on me like hockey puck penmanship like hamilton damn fool i go aaron burr 290 life just a blur did tyreek leave dna at the crime scene of zion's murder and will he be caught for that and episode seven we gonna figure out or eight nine or ten if it's gonna be any fallout from tyreek actually killing zion Tyreek makes a dangerous decision to help Diana get rid of Zion. He teams up with Brayden and things quickly spiral out of control. Let's break down what happened, what it could mean for Tyreek and Brayden. Tyreek and Diana's plan. Tyreek agrees to help Diana take out Zion, who she sees as a threat because the officer Felicia basically told her that she had to do it. While we don't know everything about why Zion needs to be dealt with, we can just assume that it's because he told Carter that he was snitched and he actually killed a civilian. We know Carter is not playing about killing civilians. And to be honest, all of this could have been avoided if Diana would have just called Monet instead of Tyreek. The attack on Zion. Tyreek and Brayden attack Zion and it's a rough fight. During the struggle, Tyreek get cut on the forehead. This is a big problem because it means his blood might be left at the crime scene. To make things worse, there's also a camera that catches them killing Zion. Now there's physical evidence and video footage that could leak them to the murder. DNA at the crime scene. Tyreek injury could be his downfall. Leaving DNA like blood at a crime scene is one of the worst mistakes he could make. The police could easily trace it back to him, which could blow up his whole plan. Tyreek usually thinks ahead and is careful, but on this one, he really didn't go in there with a good plan. Um, sending Brayden to the door first, Zion opening the door, pulling Brayden in. Then Tyreek, instead of kicking the door in or stepping into the door, he sticks his gun into the door and then obviously we know what happened after that zion knocked the gun out his hand and a tussle ensued to be honest tyreek was just too eager and um he didn't think that through well enough caught on camera not only did tyreek leave dna but he and brayden were also caught on camera this footage could fall into the hands of detective carter we already know that uh felicia got it so maybe detective carter do have it as well now, we already know Detective Carter is dirty and he'll do anything to cover up his dirt. So maybe he'll try to blackmail Tyreek in order to get Tyreek to help him cover up everything that's been going on. But Tyreek then got out of a couple of tough situations before, but we're not 100% sure he can get out of this one. Could Tyreek have done things differently? Tyreek's choice to kill Zion with Brayden was risky given how much he has to lose. It's surprising he didn't come up with a better plan. Um, going to get him at what is a safe house. Now, I don't even know if he knew it was a safe house at the time. And I spoke in another video. A lot of y'all probably wondering how did he get that address. Um, we already know how he got that address. Felicia gave it to Diana. Diana gave it to Tyreek. And all of this was done via phone. And if she sent that address via text message, that could wrap up in it, even though she didn't want to get wrapped up in it now. He could have found a quieter way to get rid of Zion or use Diana connection to deal with him without getting directly involved. But he didn't want to do that because he wanted to get in Noma's good grace. Now, the one thing he could have did was that same piece of glass that he used to uh, cut Zion in the stomach. I mean, stab him in the stomach. He could have used that to cut his neck and it wouldn't have made all that noise. Um, when you're looking at uh, power, one thing that's super unrealistic, and I know people do this a lot on power, but using that gun when there's daylight outside, when there's people around, people are going to hear that go off. Um, we know people nosy definitely in the hood, even though they may say people don't talk a lot. Once they hear them shots go off, the first thing people do is go rush to that window to try to see what's going on. So not only 
is Tyreek on footage that Felicia have. And not only did Tyreek get cut in his head and it's a possibility he leave his DNA at the scene, it's a possibility that somebody saw him leaving or coming into the building or coming in the building then leaving. And another thing about that DNA, we know that Tyreek's DNA is on file from the Ray Ray murder. Protecting Diana, was it worth it? Tyreek wants to protect Diana, but was it really his problem? By stepping in, he put himself in serious danger. Um, Diana may have asked for help, but Tyreek could have found a better solution without risking his life or freedom. And I felt like he could have sat on Zion for a couple of days, but I feel like the thing that uh, Felicia and Carter couldn't wait on was to see if Zion probably would have tried to contact the feds himself and put himself in a position to where he can snitch and then basically just have an opportunity to not go to jail or to go to jail for a lesser time. The next move is still in the evidence. Once they realize they're on camera, they'll have to act fast to stop the footage from being used against them. One idea is that that picture that's floating around where Effie's looking at the computer and it say NYPD. And I also pointed out to y'all that um, the mouse pad is the uh, police flag. Um, it's a possibility that she breaks into either Carter's Felicia's house and she tries to get that back. Now, will she get it back? I don't know. Her and Brayden definitely show up to that place together, but we going to see, um, what comes out of this plan. And then it's another picture floating around of Kane sitting in the dorm room with Effie, Tyreek, Brayden trying to figure out what's going on. And maybe even Kane and tell him, I mean, Kane tell him you got to go steal that. You got to understand that to be honest, even though it's, everybody's individual problems they going through because they all do crime together and it's something that they trying to avoid called the rico it's really everybody problem Braden's problems and drug addictions Braden is also in trouble he's been acting more reckless lately and his new drug habit is making things worse his addiction is clouding his judgment and it's clear he's in way over his head. On top of that, Braden is dealing with family problems. We saw his family end up having to leave town. We <laughs> saw his father call him a monkey and tell him he don't want nothing to do with him. So um, what else could be happening with that? You know, it's all pushing him to make bad choices and Tyreek may not be able to save him or Tyreek may be able to get half. I mean, Tyreek may have to get rid of him. And then when we look at the situation with Ellie, they told us that Ellie has sickle cell. I don't think they told us that for no reason. It's also a picture floating around of Braden in the hospital and he's sitting by somebody's bedside. That could be Ellie bed that he's sitting by. Ellie could possibly end up passing away from her sickle cells. Can Tyreek and Brayden escape? The big question is, can Tyreek and Brayden get out of this mess without going to prison or getting killed? Tyreek knows a lot of secrets about his enemies and he could use that information to save himself. But with Brayden's addiction and their involvement in Zion's murder, it's going to be tough. They're both in deep trouble and the chances of getting out unharmed are slim but not impossible and we got to understand like i said the chances of brayden making it out of this alive is kind of um slim to none too because he has compromised tyreek now i do have a video that i'm gonna do about tyreek and rashad tate and how i believe that that can further shift the relationship between tyreek and Braden, we all know Braden has been a sleazeball of a friend. Even though he's been there for him, I feel like he should be there for him because a lot of this stuff that spiraled out of control with Tyreek life started with some of the things that Braden did. Now, at any point, Tyreek could have just told Braden, no, he don't want to do this stuff and he could have stuck to his guns. It was all on Tyreek for deciding to go back to the streets after he decided he wanted to get out. But Braden made it easier for Tyreek to do that. And Braden did it for no other selfish reason than he wanted to be a part of the life. Because at the time, Wes and Holden was fine. They was bringing money in. Braden was working for the company. His parents were still rich at that time. So he didn't even need to be in the streets. He did it um, out of being selfish. And he brought Tyreek back in the streets with him. In conclusion, Tyreek's decision to help Diana has created a huge problem for both him and Braden with DNA evidence and surveillance footage linking them to Zion's murder. They're in big trouble or they could be in big trouble. 
Braden's drug problem grow and Tyreek fight to protect himself is unclear how they'll get out of this situation. Tyreek's knowledge of his enemies might be his way out, but even that might not be enough. I personally believe this episode makes a turning point for Braden and Tyreek and the fans I left wondering how could it all start to unspiral, unravel, I mean, I said unspiral. What will be their outcome now? For today's trivia question, I want to know, Ghost showed up to Stanfield at least one time that we saw on screen. We don't know about anything else that could have happened off screen, but when he showed up to Stanfield, what did he want to talk to Tyreek about? And then what did Tyreek ask him soon as he said he wanted to talk that made Ghost upset? And then Ghost said, why would you ask me that? Thanks for listening to today's breakdown of Power Book 2, Ghosts. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. I'm Fairplay2333. This is Power Book Multiverse and Cinema. And salute. Thanks for listening to today's breakdown of Power Book 2, Ghosts. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. I'm Fairplay2333. This is Power Book Multiverse and Cinema, and salute to all my cinema cronies. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen, No Time to Play Fair. If your favorite Chicago rapper turned his mixtape or album into a movie, it would be No Time to Play Fair, starring and directed by me, Fairplay2333.